Greek mythology is characterized as a group of myths and legends from ancient Greece that create stories through powerful gods and heroes to explain the state of the world, express religious ideas, and to represent their culture. Over the course of centuries, these myths and legends have transcended from old papyrus scrolls to the big screen and, of course, entered the world of animation. Disney found in Greek mythology a story that was worth telling, and it's perhaps one of the biggest myths out there. I'm Keegan from Channel Frederator, and you're watching 107 Facts About Hercules. Number 1. Hercules was released on June 13th, 1997. Number 2. It's Disney's 35th feature film and the 8th film produced in the successful period known as the Disney Renaissance, which brought huge profits for the company. Number 3. The Disney Renaissance period spanned from 1989 till 1999 and includes other classic Disney films like The Little Mermaid, The Rescuers Down Under, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, The Lion King, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Mulan, and Tarzan. Number 4. Hercules was directed by Ron Clements and John Musker, both of whom also directed other popular Disney films like The Great Mouse Detective, The Little Mermaid, Aladdin, Treasure Planet, The Princess and the Frog, and Moana. Number 5. After Aladdin, the directors began exploring several options for their next project, reviewing more than 30 ideas before settling on Hercules. Number 6. Clements began his career as an animator at Hanna-Barbera, later moving on to Disney as an animator on The Rescuers and Pete's Dragon, among many other projects. Number 7. Musker met Clements when they were both working as animators on The Fox and the Hound. Number 8. Both Clements and Musker were apprenticed to the legendary Frank Thomas, one of Disney's nine old men, and was a co-author of The Twelve Principles of Animation, a work many refer to as the Animation Bible. Number 9. Art designer Gerald Scarf, who designed almost all the characters, is a famous English artist and illustrator, best known for his work with Pink Floyd and his animations on Pink Floyd's The Wall. Number 10. In Greek mythology, there are nine muses, although in the film we only see five. The five muses in the film consist of Calliope, the muse of epic poetry, Cleo, the muse of history, Melpopene, the muse of tragedy, Terpsichore, the muse of dance, and Thalia, the muse of comedy. Number 11. The Spice Girls were invited to voice the muses and sing the songs, but they declined the offer due to a scheduling conflict. Number 12. In one of the songs, the muses sing about the public appearances of Hercules to make money, and we see that there's a lot of marketing around his image. But as modern as this sounds, in ancient Greece and Rome, athletes were paid very well to do exactly what Hercules did for the masses. Number 13. Aside from the sixth symphony sequence in the 1940 Fantasia film, this is the first Disney film entirely inspired by mythology and not by a fairy tale. Number 14. Although the movie is inspired by Greek mythology, Hercules is the Roman equivalent of the Greek god Heracles. Number 15. On his way to Thebes, Hercules meets Megara and rescues her from Nessus, and although in Greek mythology this is not the way they meet, it was when Hercules met his second wife, Deianira. Number 16. The scene in which pain and panic take the form of snakes to get rid of little Hercules who just grabs them by the head and hits them is a reference to the mythology. According to the myth, the goddess Hera sent two snakes to kill Hercules when he was a young boy, who simply took them by the neck and hanged them. Number 17. The character Hercules was the first time that Disney animator Andreas Dea got to animate a hero. He had previously animated just villains, namely Gaston, Jafar, and Scar. Number 18. He stated that Hercules had been the most difficult character to animate in his career up to that point, because his muscles and a large part of his anatomy are visible. Normally, the majority of characters' body parts were covered by clothes, which allows animators to only focus on the visible parts. Number 19. Depending on how many heads the Hydra had, it took animators anywhere between 6 to 14 hours to render just one frame. Number 20. When Phil and Hercules enter Phil's lair, Hercules hits his head on a pole, which is said to be Argo's mast. In Greek mythology, Jason, captain of the Argos, died from being hit with a mast, and in myths, Hercules was one of the sailors better known as Argonauts. Number 21. The Hydra was done in CGI unlike the rest of the movie, which is in traditional animation. 
It was made this way because it would have been incredibly difficult to animate each of the heads separately. Number 22. Prior to the movie's release, director John Musker stated that he had long been a fan of Gerald Scarf's work as a cartoonist. He initially hired him only to assist with character design during production, but Scarf later worked closely with the artists as artistic advisor to the animators. Number 23. Scarf worked hand-in-hand -hand with art director Andy Gaskell and artist Sue Nichols and oversaw the production style where he would incorporate his style into every artistic aspect of the film. Number 24. In addition to Scarf's designs, part of the film's style is inspired by ancient Greek art, especially during the musical numbers of the Muses. Number 25. For the 1940 Fantasia Symphony No. 6, many animators reportedly suggested taking inspiration from ancient Greek art, but Disney rejected the idea because they believed such a style would be too experimental for an audience. Number 26. For the release of the film, director Ron Clements also defended the differences between this take on the story and the original myth, arguing that there is no definitive version of the myth of Hercules, and that there are many popular stories, all of which they drew from for the film. Number 27. Eric Goldberg, Phil's animation supervisor, said that Phil was inspired by Grumpy from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and Bacchus from Fantasia. Number 28. Directors John Musker and Ron Clements envisioned Olympus as a city made of clouds, and to achieve their vision, they painted cloud backgrounds mixed with hand-drawn effects, like when we see the recliner being created when Hercules is a baby. Number 29. The project was originally going to be an adaptation of The Odyssey, but it was scrapped because it didn't fit the current animated comedy formula. Number 30. For this film, 1,601 backgrounds were made by the hands of 41 artists. Number 31. 108 effects artists were commissioned to add shine to the gods and fire to Hades' hair, as well as to create the four elements that surrounded the Titans and Zeus's thunder, among many more. Number 32. For this 90-minute film, 72,000 pencils and 1 million sheets were needed. Number 33. Producer Alice Dewey, along with directors and supervisors, took a trip to Greece and Turkey in the spring of 1995, where they visited ancient sites and consulted experts on Greek mythology. Number 34. Animation work started at the end of 1995, with a team of 906 artists made up of animators and technicians. Among these 906 artists was an entire team of 100 artists who were located in Paris and animated 10 minutes of film. Number 35. Animator Nick Ranieri, another Disney veteran in charge, who also served as supervisor of the character animations of Lumiere and Miko, oversaw development of Hades, which was like a dream come true for him. Number 36. Due to the heavy criticism that the previous films Pocahontas and The Hunchback of Notre Dame for being too mature for Disney, it was decided from the beginning that Hercules was going to be a comedy film. Number 37. Zeus, the father of Hercules, is the brother of Poseidon, the god of the seas. Poseidon has a son named Triton, who you may recognize as Ariel's father, which would make Hercules Ariel's cousin. Number 38. According to mythology, Alcmena became pregnant by Zeus, since he had pretended to be her husband and Fityron while he was at war, and Hera, Zeus's wife, upon learning that Alcmena had a demigod son, did everything possible to destroy him and even kill him. In the movie, things were simplified to presenting Zeus and Hera as the biological parents of Hercules and Alcmena and Amphitiron as the adoptive parents. Number 39. This film was not successful in Greece, and in fact, it was considered an insult since it was not at all close to the original myth. Number 40. The American actor Tate Donovan was chosen to play Hercules. He's best known for his performances in film and television, including roles in Hostages, The O.C., and on Friends. Number 41. Donovan has participated in other animated projects with small roles, but with the character of Hercules, he was not only part of the movie, but also in the animated series and all of the video games. Number 42. In the Spanish film dub, the popular Puerto Rican singer and actor Ricky Martin voiced Hercules. Number 43. Meanwhile, the Mexican singer Tatiana lent her voice to Megara. In Mexico, Tatiana is known as the Queen of Children due to her popularity with children's songs. Number 44. In the original film, Susan Egan is the one who gives life to Megara. She's best known for her performances in musical theater and her voiceover work. 
She was the first Belle in the Broadway adaptation of The Beauty and the Beast, and you could hear her as Rose Quartz in Steven Universe. Number 45. Hercules' singing voice as a teenager was originally done by actor Josh Keaton, but the singing was later re-recorded to be done by Roger Bart, who also voices the regular speaking voice of Teenage Hercules. Number 46. Hades is voiced by veteran actor James Woods. During recording, Woods did a lot of ad-libbing, especially in scenes shared between Hades and Megara. Number 47. Hades is one of Woods' favorite characters, so much so that every time Disney invited him to reprise his role, he accepted. Number 48. Woods was so attached to the role that when the movie went over budget, he offered to refund his salary and do it without payment. However, Disney didn't take him up on this offer, and luckily everything worked out as we could see. Number 49. Woods' manner of speaking a mile a minute was a 180 degree change of Hades' initial characterization as a character who talks in a slow and menacing way. Woods' performance impressed the team so much that they rewrote the character. Number 50. Woods' fast-talking style provided a challenge for animators, who needed two weeks to animate one second of Hades talking. Number 51. Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson were originally considered for the role of Hades, and both worked together on Tim Burton's Batman. Coincidentally, James Woods was also considered to play the Joker. Number 52. Hades is the only deity that does not have the shining light effect that we see around the other gods and Hercules himself at the end of the movie. Instead, Hades is the only one with a smoky effect. Number 53. Other candidates for the role of Hades were Willem Dafoe and David Bowie, although a lot more auditioned for this role. In fact, John Lithgow was initially chosen for the role and had recorded all the dialogue, but was eventually replaced by Woods. Number 54. The legendary Danny DeVito plays Phil. DeVito has a tremendous career in movies, but he also knows the world of animation well, having participated in projects like The Lorax, Space Jam, and even The Simpsons. Number 55. In fact, Phil's design is partially based on Danny DeVito. Number 56. Marcos Valdez gives life to Phil in his Spanish version. Marcos also participated in Shark Tale, The Jungle Book 2, and The Adventures of Buratino. Number 57. In the Spanish version, the Mexican singer Kalimba had a small participation as one of the children trapped under the rock. Before Hercules, Kalimba already had an important role in animation, giving life to little Simba from The Lion King. Number 58. When the supposed children are trapped under the huge rock, they say somebody call IXII, which is the Roman numeral version of 911. Number 59. Keith David plays Apollo. David is an experienced Hollywood actor in both live action and voice acting, but he may be remembered for his voice acting as the cat in Caroline and the Secret Door, the villainous Dr. Facilier in The Princess and the Frog, and the Flame King in Adventure Time. Number 60. John Goodman, Jim Belushi, Jeffrey Tambor, Gregory Peck, and Patrick Stewart were all considered for the role of Zeus, and almost all of them were later cast in a few Disney movies. Number 61. In the end, it was the renowned actor Rip Torn who made the cut for the role of Zeus. Number 62. In the Spanish version, the Nicaraguan Guillermo Romano was chosen to play Hercules' father. Romano had a lengthy career, but it may be easier for you to recognize him as King Triton from The Little Mermaid, or as Adam West's Batman. Number 63. Legendary Hollywood actor Charlton Heston lent his voice as the movie's narrator. Number 64. About halfway through the movie, Hades says, calm down, it's only halftime. Number 65. For the scene where Hades eats worms, James Woods ate a watermelon to make the sounds more real. Number 66. The role of pain was written with actor Bobcat Goldthwaite in mind, who confessed that he still had to audition to practically play himself. Number 67. When Hercules poses for a portrait painting, he is wearing the skin of a lion, whom you may have recognized as Scar. Number 68. The Air Herc sandals that Payne is wearing allude to Air Jordan sneakers. Number 69. Air Jordans are a line of the Nike brand, the name of which is inspired by the Greek goddess of victory called Nike. Number 70. During Hercules' training, we see that Phil, Hercules, and Pegasus are on logs with a beautiful sunset in the background, which is a reference to Karate Kid. Number 71. The statue that Hercules hits and breaks while throwing the stones is the Venus de Milo sculpture that can be visited in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. Number 72. In Greek mythology, the Muses are also daughters of Zeus, making them the half-sisters of Hercules. Number 73. 
Per the myth, Pegasus was actually created with the blood from Medusa's head and not as the movie suggests with clouds from Olympus. Number 74. When Megara and Hercules fall in love in the park, Megara pokes her back with Cupid's arrow. Number 75. Hades is probably the oldest or longest living Disney villain due to his immortality, at least if we're not counting human villains. Number 76. Early into production, the filmmakers decided the Hydra would ultimately have 30 heads, consisting of one master head. The computer could multiply the heads to their desired scale. Overall, 13 animators and technical directors spent nearly a year and a half creating the four minute battle sequence between Hercules and the Hydra. Number 77. The character of Megara is a mixture of the four wives that Hercules had according to mythology. Number 78. In mythology, the first wife of Hercules was called Megara, who is supposed to have been killed by her husband due to a fit of madness caused by Hera. Number 79. When Hercules seems to be defeated by the Hydra, Hades, sure of his victory, lights a cigar. Red Auerbach, the legendary coach of the Boston Celtics, Red Auerbach did the same when he felt that the game was already won. Number 80. In the last battle, Hercules took a piece of wood and stuck it in the eye of the Cyclops. This is inspired by the Odyssey, since this is how Odysseus kills the Cyclops. Number 81. Over a period of more than three years, Gerald Scarf created thousands of drawings for the film, some up to almost a square meter. Number 82. The methodology of Gerald's work was very instinctive. He tried to imagine and interpret how the characters would look, how they would feel, and how they should act. And when the idea came to him, he immediately began to draw so as to not lose inspiration. After Scarf would meet with the animators and supervisors, they would draw on his drawings. And if for some reason they could not see each other, he would even send them faxes from his house to make sure that his style was incorporated into the film. Number 83. Some of the 12 gigs of Hercules from mythology are shown in the song Zero to Hero, like killing the Nemean lion, capturing the Aramanthian boar alive, and driving the birds from the Stymphalus. Number 84. In fact, the myth with the Hydra is also part of these 12 gigs. Number 85. At the end of the film, we see Hermes, the messenger, playing a keyboard. Paul Schaefer, who gives life to this character and also inspired his design, played the keyboard on The Late Show with David Letterman. Number 86. When we see Hermes handing flowers to Zeus and Hera, his pose resembles the FTD Flowers logo, which uses an illustration of Mercury. Mercury is the Roman name for Hermes. Number 87. Pain and Panic are simplified versions of the Greek names, Phobos and Deimos, which mean fear and terror. Number 88. In 2020, a live-action remake of the movie was confirmed and has been in production since. Jeffrey Silver and Karen Gilchrist, who previously produced the CGI remake of The Lion King, are attached as producers, together with the Russo brothers. The remake will put a modern spin on the myth and will be a modern musical inspired by TikTok. Yeah, you heard that right. Depending on the execution, this could even be fun to watch. Number 89. When Hercules looks for Phil the first time, Phil tells him two words, I'm already retired. And we see that Hercules reacts to that by counting the words on his fingers, confused because, well, he said two words when it's actually three. This joke alludes to the fact that the Greek translation would actually only consist of two words. Number 90. Hercules is the second Disney movie where the villain doesn't sing, the first being Oliver and Company. Number 91. The walls that we see in the House of Alchemina and Amphitaron are decorated with the frescoes from Akrotiri on the Aegean island of Thera and can be found in the National Museum of Archaeology in Athens. Number 92. In the song I Won't Say, I'm in Love, that Megara sings, her eyes are blue instead of purple. Number 93. In this same song, at the end, the muses sing a shalalala -la -la that can also be heard in the song Kiss the Girl from The Little Mermaid. This is likely no coincidence as both movies share the same composer. Number 94. Also in that song, we see that the muses take on the same poses of the busts in the Haunted Mansion, which can be found at the Disney theme park. Number 95. At the end of the film, we see Hercules talking to his parents at the top of the stairs at the gates of Olympus. However, at the very next moment, we see him downstairs approaching Megara. Of course, since he's a god, he's likely able to fly or teleport, right? Number 96. On Olympus, we can find Narcissus, but in reality, he was not a Greek god, so it wouldn't have been possible for him to be there. Number 97. When Hades gets angry, the flames in his hair turn yellow, orange, and red, but the blue fire is the hottest. Number 98. 
In the scene where the young Hercules talks to Zeus as the great stone statue, we see that Hercules wears the red ribbon of the medallion around his neck, but once Pegasus enters the picture, the ribbon disappears. Number 99. The composer of the soundtrack was the renowned Alan Menke, who had previously worked on other Disney movies like The Little Mermaid and Aladdin. Number 100. The stone bench that Hercules and Megara sit on is a scola, which is a semicircular bench that was extremely popular in Pompeii. Number 101. Two of the builders above the arch that Hercules races through with the wagon in the beginning of the movie are based on directors Ron Clements and John Musker. Number 102. In that same sequence, we see at the beginning that Penelope is only sitting with Amphitaron, but later she has a bandage on her little leg. Number 103. When Hercules leaves his handprints in the cement next to the other gods and heroes, the floor reads to Sid. This is a reference to Sid Grauman, the founder of the Chinese theater in Los Angeles where celebrities have left their footprints. Number 104. When the harpies tell Hades that the planets will align in 18 years, we see six planets, but back then they only knew of the existence of five. Number 105. In the movie, Hades frees the titans from the bottom of the ocean, but in the original myth, they had been banished to Tartarus, which is the deepest and worst section of the underworld. Number 106. In this version, the Titans are seen as demons embodying the forces of nature and have no relation to the gods. But in the myth, the Titans are the parents of some of the gods and have powers just like them. Number 107. Hades is represented as a character with control over fire, but this element isn't really related to Hades. Earth and gold being the elements closest to this character. Did you enjoy our video? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.